Let's analyze this point between Andre Rublev and Carlos Alcaraz. Now, a big thank you goes to Court Level Tennis for allowing me to use this video. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. All right, let's watch this point, and then we'll diagram it. Now, this is such a great point to analyze. So the first thing I want you to notice is where Rublev is standing. He's standing quite far behind the baseline. And when we watch Carlos go into his service motion, we'll notice that Rublev moves forward and he takes a step. See that little step with Andre's right foot? He's trying to get pre-movement and forward momentum into this return of serve. So when you're returning serve, start farther back than you want to be when contacting to get your momentum going forward. Now he does a split step and the perfect timing of the split step is to actually be in the air as your opponent makes contact. So we can see the ball being contacted right there. We'll go right to that frame. And if we look at Rublev's feet, we can actually see that he is in the air at this point. So he has not landed his split step. If we go to when he lands the split step, which is right there, we actually see that this ball is almost crossing the net at that point. That is actually the proper timing of the split step. You want to be in the air as your opponent hits, so you'll take off before they hit, be in the air as they hit, and land after. That synchronizes your feet hitting the ground with when your brain reacts to where the ball is going, at your body, out wide, down the tee. And this is true if you're at the net, during a rally, returning serve, whenever. So that is the proper timing. Film yourself returning serve and make sure that that is the timing of your splits up, you'll react so much faster. Now, this is a body serve. We can see where this ball is landing. This is a really great serve. If you've got a fast serve, serve right at your opponent. Get them moving out of the way. We can see as he hits this ball, his back leg kicks behind him. That's just because as his racket's going forward, his leg is going to kick back. Every action has an equal and opposite. And you'll notice the abbreviated return of serve finish. Right, So he's not following through over the shoulder. It's a good idea on return of serves, especially on the two-handed backhand, to finish basically with the racket at head level, penetrating through the ball. A lot of consistency comes from this. Now, I want to show you Carlos and how he comes out of this serve. And specifically, I want you to notice right here where he is landing with his left foot. His left foot, when he lands is actually replaced by his right foot. Do you see that right there? What he is actually doing is making sure that he is moving slightly left to his left after he lands. And the reason is he wants more of the court over on his forehand side, where his backhand is going to be a small target for Andre to hit into. So when you are serving and you come out of your serve, it's not a bad idea as long as you've got a big serve and your opponent can't just rip it up the line on you. It's a good idea to move slightly off to your side to allow more forehands to be struck on that next shot. That's called a serve plus one. So Andre returns down the middle and starts moving across. Now we see that forehand that Carlos wanted. Now he can hit behind Andre, or he can hit down the line, which is more of the natural direction for him to hit. That's called, uh, it's actually called directionals, where the line goes through Carlos's body. And if the ball doesn't go through that line, then it's actually smart to change direction. If Carlos has that line through his body and Andre hits through that line to get to the backhand, well, then it's actually smart to go back cross court again. So because the ball did not cross that imaginary line that goes through everybody when they're hitting. Because it did not cross through that line, then either hitting back to where it came from or changing direction just from patterns of play and consistency is actually a smart idea. So he decides to hit inside in, which is when you run around your backhand to hit a forehand and you hit it down the line, and he rips this ball up the line. Absolutely love it, getting Andre in a ton of trouble. And if we look at his technique, watch... At contact, that's the contact. He's making contact with the ball right there. Look where his non-hitting hand is. It's up, as I tell you. You want to look like you're waving to your opponent or have your hand up by head level when you're striking the ball. And look at his follow-through up above his head. 
That does that just look like a right-handed Rafael Nadal, right? The racket up above his head, it's a great way to produce spin and upward brush up the back of the ball. Such a great way to make sure that when the ball hits the ground, it also basically accelerates because of all, all of that spin. Now, as Andre sees that ball, he actually changes his grip right there. And you can see him changing the grip. He is changing his grip from a top spin grip to his volley grip. And this is what it was going to allow him to hit a squash shot. He's actually going to slice under this ball right there. You can see it's almost like a sidearm serve and he's slicing the ball with underspin. Now, when Carlos hits this ball, he knows based on the distance that Andre is going to have to run, he knows that Rublev is going to be in trouble. So as soon as Carlos hits this ball, he starts coming forward. You know, there are three times to come to the net in tennis. Serve and volley when your opponent's in trouble, when you get a short ball. So when he hits this ball, he knows that Rublev is in trouble. And you watch Carlos, he's already coming forward. He didn't wait to see. And you can see he's like, oh, he's in trouble. And now he's coming forward to get this ball out of the air. He's doing this to make sure that Rublev doesn't have the time to recover. You see a lot of recreational players. They will hit a great shot to the corner, but then they give their opponent all of that time to get back into position. You want to rob your opponent of time by moving forward and advancing, taking that time away. So Rublev gets the ball back over the net. Now, Carlos actually chooses a forehand volley here. He could move this direction and keep the ball more on his left side to hit a backhand volley this way, but he chooses to hit a forehand volley. So this is a slightly more difficult skill, but maybe he feels like he's going to be able to control what he does with this ball a little better. You'll notice in this situation, Rublev is completely off the court. And basically, I, I guess you could say he's in line with the singles line, right? So there's all of this court open. But Carlos knows that he has moved around this ball. So he has also left this area of the court open. And so if he chooses to hit into the open court, he better hit short. And we've seen him do that in previous analysis that I've done with him against Rafael Nadal. We know that he knows that he should hit this ball short. So if he hits into the open court, it would be incorrect to volley deep. And that's a common mistake. Players volley deep into the open court, and it's actually a shorter distance for your opponent to run. So if you are going to volley into the open court to hit a winner, then you want to volley short so the distance is farther and your opponent cannot get it. Now, he actually chooses to wrong foot Rublev and hit behind him. Rublev's moving this direction, and I'm going to talk to you actually about the direction that Rublev was moving. Um, but he was moving back toward the center and Carlos used that to his advantage, hitting behind him. The one thing you'll notice with Rublev is as he's moving for this ball, notice how far he's still behind the baseline. I would actually recommend that if you think your opponent is going to volley into the open court, that you actually move inside the court as you're you know, predicting with, a, with an educated guess where that ball is going to go. Because the only ball that Rublev could get would actually be the the not smart shot, which is the deep volley. If Carlos had volleyed it short, Rublev moving straight across would have to then change direction to get up there. Um, so I would actually want Rublev in this situation to be moving inside the court as he's preparing to, you know, see where Carlos is going to hit this ball. But nonetheless, Carlos hits behind him and wins the point. All right, let's watch this point one more time. The pros are not using complicated strategies. They're using simple strategies and executing them at an incredibly high level. That's why we enjoy watching them. But what they're actually doing when you break it down are things that you and I can do. Now, if you're looking to use the strategies and tactics that the pros are using, then you gotta pick up the singles playbook from Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Over 50 pages, play after play after play, all broken down on how to beat your toughest opponents, how to beat pushers, 
counter punchers, aggressive baseliners, how to beat servant volleyers, Dr. Feelgood, those are people who slice and dice like spin doctors, people who put a lot of spin on the ball, all court players and how to beat lefties. Now the strategy we just saw Carlos use is called the serve plus one and it's actually, let me find it, it's actually in page 39 of the singles playbook. What's cool is each page has a QR code where you just take your phone or tablet, hold it up over the QR code and up pops a video automatically of Will Hamilton explaining exactly these strategies. You can pick up the singles playbook using my link in the description below. I'm also gonna pin it in the first comment. Now, if you're looking for new people in your local area, some unsuspecting victims to use those strategies against, people to play against, practice with, or even a coach is gonna help you execute and learn and practice the strategies in the singles playbook, then use my link for Play Your Court, and it's playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. And when you use my link to sign up for Play Your Court, you get 50% off. All right. Let's look at this point. We've got Andre returning serve. We've got Carlos serving. We saw Andre make contact with his return here, but he didn't start there. He started back here. It's important when you have established based on the speed of the serve and your reaction time and how much difficulty you're having returning serve. It's important once you establish where you want to be standing to return serve that you don't start there. So let's say based on your next opponent, you want to be standing on the baseline to return serve. Well, don't start there. Start slightly farther back to get pre-movement and kind of fight fire with fire and get your body weight going into that ball. A lot of players get pushed back on the return. So start farther back, get your body weight going forward. And the proper timing is to move forward and then jump just before they make contact so that as they make contact, you're in the air. And then just after contact, that's when you land. It synchronizes your head and your reaction time with when your feet hit the ground and you're so much faster on your first step. Now, when it came to Carlos, we saw him hit a really hard serve right at the body. And we saw him after he served and landed, he had a slight movement to his left. That's not by chance, that's by design. And you need to be copying that. If you've got a big serve, and you should only be doing this on big serves. You don't wanna just tap the ball over the net and then move over because then they can rip it up the line on you. But if you're hurting your opponent with your serve and forcing them to kind of get jammed and not do much with the ball, then it's smart to hit your serve and slightly move towards your backhand side, which makes it more uh, possible to hit uh, forehands, and that's kind of that serve plus one, combining in a powerful duo your serve and your next shot to really take a stranglehold on the point. So Andre had a ball coming at his body, so it was smart to go down the middle, just margin for error. As he recovered, we saw um, Carlos just move slightly over, even more, slightly over to that backhand side to make sure he can hit the forehand. Now this is where he rips the ball up the line. The idea is like directionals, right? An imaginary line that goes through your body, which is taught in the singles playbook. And if the ball does not cross that imaginary line, then changing direction is a smart play. So he rips the ball down the line, and the moment he does that, Andre was in trouble. In fact, let me grab my racket here. We saw Andre with his forehand, as soon as the ball went to his right, he went like this, and he changed grips from his semi-western grip to a continental. And he's doing that to hit a squash shot. And that's where you can slice under the ball and you can play the ball late and still have a chance to get that ball over the net. Now, as soon as Carlos hit that ball, he knew that uh, Andre was in trouble. So that's why you see him start coming forward. And he's doing that to rob Andre of the time. Now, Andre hits this ball back. The ball kind of comes right at Carlos. Alcaraz, so he could have moved this direction to hit a backhand volley and hit it this way, but he chose to hit a forehand volley. Uh, that's fine for the higher level players. It's a little more complicated, especially with the footwork to be able to do that and you kind of have to step behind. Check out the volley. You'll see that after he hits it, he steps behind uh, and he's doing that just as a way to keep his balance. But he moves off to the side to hit the forehand volley. Now there are three choices he has. Two smart ones and one not so smart one. He could hit short into the open court, smart play. He could hit deep into the open court, not a smart play. And he could hit behind Rublev, smart play. And so he chose one of the two smart plays, which is behind. The reason you don't wanna hit deep, and we saw this, if he hits this ball deep into the open court, remember, we saw Rublev moving across. So it's actually a shorter distance 
as he hits that ball, he's actually hitting it the direction and in a place where Andre can actually get to that ball quite easily. So you have to, when you're ending the point with your volleys, you, if you're gonna hit an angle, it has to leave the court using the sideline or just land short and maybe land twice by the time it even reaches the side tee. But he ends up hitting the ball behind Rublev and then he can't change direction. One thing, and I mentioned this, is if I were you know, strategizing with, with Rublev in that situation, I would say, look, you don't wanna run parallel to the baseline in this situation because the two shots that really we should see Carlos hitting is either behind you or short into the open court. So I would actually want him moving this direction. If he moves in this way, if the ball goes down the line, he might be able to just reach over and get it, but at least if the ball is hit short, he's running this direction to get there, and if the ball is hit deep, at least he has a chance to maybe reach for that ball. So when your opponent's at the net and you think they're gonna end the point into the open court, don't run parallel to the net run in at an angle and you'll actually have a better chance to run down that ball. You should be filming yourself playing matches, right? Is there somebody you struggle against? Then film yourself playing a match against them and analyze it. Look to see if that opponent split steps. Look to see if they, you're like, huh, they keep struggling with high backhands. Oh, I know, I'm gonna start hitting them high backhands the next time I play them. Analyze your own game. Start incorporating the things that you're learning in these videos. And if you do, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.